All right, so here is a couple of problems worked out for you. Um, these are the sort of things that I want you to be able to do. Um, I think they're really important, and so let's have at it. Um, here are two triangles. I'm going to fill in some information, and I'm not going to fill in all of the information. We're going to talk about um, how to fill in the rest of the triangle, and so um, here are two different triangles. One has angle alpha in the uh, lower left-hand corner, one has angle beta in the lower left-hand corner. We're going to use these triangles for everything we do today, so we're going to keep referring back to them. Um, so, uh, when you're given triangles uh, by me, I, I might do something like this where I don't write all the information. And so one thing we might want to do is solve for x and y. And uh, the way you solve these is you remember that these are the legs, and the reason that they're the legs is because they touch uh, the right angle. And the third is called the hypotenuse, right? The third uh, side of a triangle is called the hypotenuse, and so up there we have the hypotenuse, and we always have the following rule for triangles. We have um, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. These are the leg lengths, and that's the hypotenuse length. Right? And, um, so, here's our triangles again. If we try to solve the left triangle, we get that 2 squared plus x squared is 3 squared, which is 4 plus x squared equals 9. And if we solve for x squared, we get that x squared equals 5. And so x equals radical 5 is our hypoten is our, I'm sorry, leg length. So this is radical 5. Here, we have 4 squared plus 5 squared equals y squared. And so 16 plus 25 is y squared. And so y squared equals 41, which means y is the square root of 41. So now we have um, all of the sides labeled, and so let's talk about what we can do um, with that information. And what we can do with that information is we can start calculating trig values. You have to remember, um, so Katoa, but if I want sine of alpha, right? So Katoa tells me that sine is the opposite over hypotenuse, and the opposite is take where the angle is and draw a line pointing out from it. That side is opposite to that angle. And so sine of alpha is radical 5 divided by the hypotenuse, which is 3. Cosine of alpha is adjacent over hypotenuse. Adjacent is below is below the angle there, it's right, it's touching it, right? See how this, um, this side here actually touches the angle? So the adjacent side has length 2, and the hypotenuse has length 3. Tangent of alpha, right, is opposite over adjacent, so we take radical 5 and divide it by 2. Likewise, we can do um, cosecant. Cosecant is 1 over sine, and so um, we just flip the fraction and we get 3 over radical 5. Um, secant is 1 over cosine, so we get 3 halves. And uh, cotangent is 1 over tangent, and so we get 2 over radical 5. And so there are all of our values. If we come over here and we do beta now, sine of beta, remember it's opposite over hypotenuse, there's the opposite, up here's the hypotenuse, 
and so it's 5 over radical 41. Cosine of beta, cosine is adjacent, which is 4 over hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite over adjacent, and so it's 5 over 4. Just filling in the rest of this, we get radical 41 over 5, secant is radical 41 over 4, and cotangent is 4 fifths. Okay, so if you have the sides, um, and you have all of their sizes, then you can figure out the, the trig values for all of the corresponding um, angles. It has nothing to do with the unit triangle at this point, or the unit um, circle at this point. It's 100% about the triangle that's in front of you. Um, so now, if we take exactly those same um, exactly those same triangles, I can start asking you questions about things like uh, what is the sine of alpha plus beta, right? And so, in some sense, the right way to do this is to uh, take the two triangles. Okay, here's the alpha triangle. And on top of it, right, there's another right angle. Draw the beta triangle, and you're going to have to um, make this match that in order to, right, because this is 3 and that's 4, they shouldn't match up. So you can um, scale one of the triangles, and then to figure out sine, you know, keep drawing, and then it's um, that height divided by the new hypotenuse. But man, oh man, is that messy, and not at all something that's even feasible. But, lucky for us, we have um, the formula for sine of alpha plus beta, right? Remember sine, cosine, cosine, sine. And so if we could figure out a way to compute sine of alpha, cosine of beta, cosine of alpha, and sine of beta, we would have it made. And if we look back exactly one page, we have exactly this information. Sine of alpha is radical 5 over 3. And so you just write radical 5 over 3. Cosine of beta is 4 over radical 41. And we've got it, right? That's half of that. We need cosine of alpha now, which is 2 thirds. And sine of beta, which is 5 over radical 41. And you can see that the bottoms are both 3 radical 41, which is good for us. And so the answer we're going to get is 4 radical 5 plus 10 over 3 radical 41. See, it's not something to worry about. It's not something difficult. Um, as long as you can compute the values of sine and cosine of those angles, then you can compute sine of the sum, cosine of the sum, and so on. Let's do cosine of 2 alpha. Well, there's a lot of ways we can write cosine of the double angle. Um, let's do 1 minus 2 sine squared alpha. And so if we go back two pages here, sine of alpha is radical 5 over 3. So we replace sine of alpha with radical 5 over 3. And remember, since it's sine squared, we have to square that. And so we get 1 minus 2 times 5 ninths. Right? Radical 5 times radical 5 is 5. 3 times 3 is 9. And so we get 1 minus 10 ninths. And we change 1 into 9 ninths, and so negative 1 ninth. There's cosine of 2 alpha. Alright, so 
this is how we can go about solving these, um, these values of sine and cosine and whatever, just given a little bit of information. Uh, this is one of the things that I'm definitely going to expect you to be able to do. Um, and so I just, I really want you to be practicing um, solving triangles and then doing all of these trig values. Um, let's look at one last thing we can do that's sort of for free. So evaluate cosine squared of pi over 8 minus sine squared of pi over 8. Now, oh man, we don't know how to do the half angles yet. And uh, all said, this looks really scary. But um, you should, in the back of your head, be thinking cosine squared minus sine squared is cosine of 2 theta. And it, all that that requires is that we do the same angle twice in a row. So look at this. We have pi over 8 and pi over 8, and so we can replace this with cosine of twice this angle. And so it's equal to cosine of pi over 4. And that's easy. It's radical 2 over 2. And so look, you are able to evaluate this giant mess by recognizing that it's one of our double angle formulas. Let's do one where we recognize the sum or difference. So here you're asked to evaluate um, cosine pi over 6, cosine pi over 12, minus sine pi over 6, sine pi over 12, and uh, again in the back of your head you should be thinking, you know, cosine, cosine, clap sine, sine, and remember that um, cosine of alpha plus beta is cosine alpha cosine beta minus sine alpha sine beta and here that's going to be our alpha and that's going to be our beta see how it's used both times like that alpha beta alpha beta and it's cosine cosine minus sine sine and so this should just equal the cosine of pi over 6 plus pi over 12 and if you add those, right, pi over 6 plus pi over 12, you get 3 pi over 12, which is pi over 4. So it's cosine of pi over 4 again. And cosine of pi over 4 is still rad 2 over 2. And so we took giant mess and made it something nice. Um, and so these are a couple of things I want you to be able to do. Recognize not only how to go from the left side of this equation to the right, but when you see the right side of the equation, that you can go back to the left. Same here, right? Normally, you're going to see this and spit out something like that, but I want you to be able to see this and change it to that as well. So um, these are some of the things I want you to be able to do. This is just a, a quick review of some of the type problem types that you're going to be seeing. Um, so this is nothing. This won't add any new homework, but it should help you do um, existing homework. So I will see you in class. Have a good day.